What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate. Reverse rants, no hate. So, I had no voice. <clears throat> My voice is just coming back now. If y'all watched the video that I did about um, Frank Sanchez, you probably could hear it then. You know, like my, it was gone. I was out here sounding like like somebody dying of thirst. My boy, I don't know what. I'm not sick. I don't know what the hell happened. My voice is just gone. Okay, so I did that video the same night of the fight, which was on the Charlo Canelo undercard. Now, let me get to Jamel Charlo and Canelo Alvarez, and this is just a simple one, man. You know. For people that like to spew out hate and just a lot of ignorance and just saying things just to say it, I don't like to get caught up into that. <clears throat> but, you know, and, and for me, I look at what happens come fight night. Now, there's things you can detect and see before fight night, don't get me wrong. But, I've seen many, many fights where one guy was mouthing off and talking big and wind up getting knocked out by the quiet guy. This situation is real simple. <clears throat> Jamel Charlo said, I do this for the culture. I do this for the culture that people pretty much disrespect or put down or, you know, something to that effect. <clears throat> and he said he's a bad motherfucker. And, <clears throat> you know, he didn't talk a lot of shit, but he definitely spoke like he had confidence at the final press conference and even during the press conference <clears throat> you know i don't think because he was giving canelo props and people are saying how he used to be and well if that's the case then <clears throat> maybe he's had a change overall it's not just a canelo thing maybe it's just he's not what he used to be maybe he lost that that killer instinct who knows because this is not the same jamel charlo that we used to see him right now i'm gonna tell you what i think happened Personally, I think that when he got in that ring with Canelo and then and, and he basically, not even to the face, first couple of rounds, neither one of them was really throwing punches. He gave Canelo nothing to worry about because <clears throat> when Canelo started to heat up, he didn't. Now, I believe he caught something on the arm or to the body. He felt Canelo's power and he got scared. There's no way, first off, you're coming for this man belts. Last thing you want to do is get behind in the scorecards. When Canelo was walking him down, Canelo has never been good at cutting off a ring. Jamel Charlo was spinning out, circling out. He was doing that good. He wasn't throwing any goddamn punches. He was barely throwing anything. He fought like he was scared. He basically choked up. Now, you've always heard me say, I robbed the Charlos, right? Regardless to who they fight. That's what I do. Because I liked them as fighters. Now, how this goes from this fight on, we don't know. But Jamel Charlo wasn't on anybody's pound for pound list. I don't care about a pound for pound list. But after that performance, a lot of people are going to say, see, I told you. I ain't worried about, and it's not about Saying it to the fans, it's, <clears throat> it will be directed at anybody that defended Jamel Charlo. I don't care about that. I don't care about a pound for pound list. But point is, Jamel Charlo didn't fight like an elite fighter. See, this is what people got to understand. You can win titles against guys. That doesn't make them elite level. It just means you beat those fighters in that particular division. <clears throat> it's like... <clears throat> Trying to understand and see how good fighters are before they get in the ring. It's easy to think a guy would do this and that when they get in there. I mean, one of the best examples we have is Josh Taylor versus, you know, Teofimo Lopez. It was a whitewash. It wasn't even close. Just like this fight. You know, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So, <clears throat> when it comes to the biggest fight of your career and you choke... 
all this talk they was doing about how they could beat Floyd Mayweather and they was this and that, or whether it was him or I don't remember if it was Jamel or Jamal. But my thing was, it doesn't matter what you say. The reality is what you do and what we see, what your performance is. Why would you even worry about you know comparing yourself to Floyd Mayweather, which is the first person that came over up on that stage, gave you a hug and congratulated you for trying, even though you didn't try. Jamel Charlo did much of nothing. Now, Canelo did what he was supposed to do, but let's be real. What the fuck did Charlo give him to worry about? Nothing. So it was, a, it was an easy night. He gave him nothing. <clears throat> Same way when Crawford beat Spence. And, and like people don't understand, you can't take credit away because a person goes in there and fight and they get the job done. What I'm saying is the same way Spence was giving Crawford enough to worry about, but Spence was at least trying. He was just repetitive, <clears throat> looked weak to me. You know, basically, he, 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 he but he was predictable. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Ah, my voice is still not really back. You see, I keep slipping away the more I talk. So I'm trying to get this video out, but he basically gave Terrence Crawford nothing to worry about. Okay, he's doing the same old shit. Jab, jab, right hand, you know. Jab, left hand. Jab, same, same old thing, you know. Same old thing, over and over. The funny thing was, when Jamel did let his hands go, most of the time he was landing. And I started noticing him kind of like going wild with the left hook and kind of winding up with it. And it was like, okay, his punches had nothing on him. Like, they didn't affect Canelo. Canelo was able to take his shots. Now, we said going up two weight classes. It's not the same thing. It can be. It depends on the person in that particular fight, how well your body adjusts. And so you don't really know until you get in there. But the effort. Jamel did nothing, man. He had to know he was behind on the scorecards. You saw no urgency for him to try to even take over the fight. So I was wondering, like, after, like, the third round, is he trying to let Canelo, like, punch himself out or get winded, and then he's going to try to rally and, you know, try to win four through, 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 through 12 or whatever, like, and then the fourth round comes, same thing, fifth round. So it's like it, the fight, it, it, every round just looked the same to me. Well, when he caught Jamel with that shot, I think it was in the ninth round, was it? Whatever round it was. And Jamel took a knee. He said he wanted to clear his head because he got wobbled. So instead of just standing there trying to take more punches, he just took a knee and, okay, cool. That was probably the smartest thing he did the whole fight. That's probably the best thing. I mean, when he decided, like I said, when he decided to let his hands go, he would, he was throwing one punch at a time. Then he'd throw one, two here and there. It, it, I mean, he, he really did nothing. So Canelo didn't have to worry about anything. Okay. <clears throat> See, it's easy to say you could beat this person, you could beat that person. Now, this is a perfect example, guys, of when people say, oh, Fury could beat AJ, or Fury could beat Usyk, or Fury, I don't care about what you think. Get in the ring and show it. Because, see, you could be a heavy favorite and get your ass whooped. You could be an underdog and wind up whooping ass. So, when I hear people say these things, you know, this is exactly what I mean. Earl Spence went there against Crawford. I mean, it was a pathetic, pathetic night, but the performance wise, he just he did he failed. But Spence was trying. Spence was trying. At least he was trying. Jamel was just trying to not get knocked out. And he even said, you know, I didn't get knocked out. <clears throat> and it's like, there's no moral victory, man. You guys don't understand how I move. Some of you get it. I will never respect the motherfucker enough to where I don't fear anybody. I don't fear any motherfucker, dead or alive. Never have, never will. I'd be damned if I'm going to actually let respect turn to fear. Where I'm, I'm, I'm... Like, come on, man. Somebody teeing off on you, you're not throwing punches back. Nah. Nah. 
So, what happened to the Lions only? Now, I'm just being real. And y'all know I've been rocking with the Charlos since day one. But this was like, are you going to leave in the ring or not? You saw what he did. And here's the crazy part. Isn't Jamel Charlo the one that said there's going to be a rematch? He's going to exercise a rematch clause if he was to lose, right? What did he say at the post conference? He's going back down to 154, so he didn't even want the rematch. Now, that being said, <clears throat> Jamel Charlo fought scary. You look at anybody else he fought, and you see, even with the Castano fight, he fought a different fight. He didn't use the guess, the, the, the first fight. You know, a, a fight is a fight, man, but he, he got rid of him in, his, in the rematch. But the point is, he fought back. He fought Canelo like he was scared, man. He really did. He, he fought Canelo like he was, like, scared. Like, like I said, I think he felt the power. Not even to the fucking face. To the arms, maybe the body shot. He he felt the, 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 the power, and I think he just got scared. And that's how he fought. And I really was watching this like, damn. Now, I told you, nothing really shocks me. But I'm watching this like, this don't even seem like I'm watching Jamel Charlo right now. Like, who the fuck is this motherfucker that look like Jamel in there? It's not Jamal. God damn, what the fuck happened to Jamel? You know, all the lions only talk and all of the, you know, <clears throat> I'm stepping up there to be great. No, you didn't really dare to be great. You got up. All right, by taking the fight is one thing, but you didn't really fight. He barely did nothing. I mean, all of the, the hollering and screaming don't mean nothing. That That's not what gets my attention about a fight. It's what you do in the ring. So he could have stood there and yelled at Canelo, screamed at Canelo, cursed at Canelo. But if that's what he was going to do in that ring, did it, did it matter? No. So <clears throat> after that happened, people would think maybe Jamal wanted to get revenge. Jamal, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> there was nothing going on in that ring. <clears throat> that Why would you want to see a rematch? And then here's the thing. He was saying, <clears throat> I should have been doing this. The game plan was to come forward more, use my reach, but also walk him down, engage. He didn't want to engage. He was scared to engage. I feel like he felt like, I feel like if he, that he felt like if he was to engage, he would leave himself open for something. He wound up getting counted with something. And he felt like a scared man. Just say it like it is. So, <clears throat> like I told you guys, man, a lot of these guys, they lack basic fundamentals. So even though they're good in their own right, they're not elite level fighters, man. Now, by today's standards, yeah. Yeah, so <clears throat> winning belts. <clears throat> We're in an era where people talk about it doesn't even matter if you have a title or not. Who the fuck becomes a fighter and don't want to become champion? So watching that, <clears throat> I just looked at it and said, damn, he's already talking about he's going back to 154. He didn't even talk about a rematch clause at the post-conference. It was, it was before the fight. And it said, damn. Now you talk about fighting. You know, they asked him about fighting Crawford. Crawford responded and said that Charlo was no longer on his radar. And it's like, I always felt like Canelo doesn't need Crawford. Charlo, on the other hand, now, <coughs> even if he was to beat Canelo, <coughs> Canelo would exercise that rematch clause. Then he had to do it twice. Now, say he does it twice. Why not go for why why not have Crawford name on your resume as well? So here's what's gonna happen. Jamel Charlo became undisputed at 154. With all of the fights that he did beat, Canelo was the very best of all those guys. And he wasn't even competitive. So <clears throat> if he wasn't on anybody's pound for pound list, then I'm pretty sure he never he never will be. Unless he finds it in him. To, like who is he gonna beat? Who is he gonna beat now? I don't think people think now. At this point, before this Canelo fight, you had people thinking that hey, him and Crawford would be a good fight. But after watching this, I'm pretty sure people now. <clears throat> no, Crawford doesn't has Canelo's power, not even close to it. So that still could be a different fight. But <clears throat> the fact that. Jamel has showed you, yeah, there are fighters 
that can make me climb up and not fight back. I mean, he really fought Canelo like he was scared, man. Like he said, he said that, you know, the weight won't be a problem and stuff, you know. Um, but, you know, at the end of the fight, he said that, you know, he felt the weight a little bit and everything and all. But look, skills pay the bills. And also, he said even after he lost to Canelo, he still think he's the best fighter in the world. You can't really believe that. Because if Jamel really believed that, he definitely exercised that rematch clause. You still don't lose anything at 154, right? Well, they were talking about how one of his belts got taken away. And I keep telling you guys. So, like, when you hear me tell you guys, if unless you are a franchise champion, <clears throat> you don't have those same privileges. You just don't. So now, looking at options for... And look, like I said, Canelo did what he had to do. He did what he's supposed to, but Jamel made it super easy because he was scared to fight back. I just got to say it like it is. He was just fucking scared to fight back. You know, his brother showed up to show support and everything, and I mean, people were saying, yeah, nah, he's going to do this and this, and I'm saying, well, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, that support can spark you, can can give you an incentive, but, you know, you you have to have that in you already. Jamal can't. He's not in there helping you fight. Jamal just at ringside. He came to, you know, see his brother and, and support him. You know, but he didn't fight like, like, this lion's only stuff. He, he didn't fight like a lion, man. You know, uh, I'm not even interested to see a rematch. Because the way how he just showed nothing, what is he going to do in a rematch? I'm not even interested in seeing him fight Jamal. I mean, um, Terrence Crawford. I'm not even in, I'm not even interested in seeing Jamal fight Terrence Crawford. And also, at this point, <clears throat> I'm not even interested in seeing Jamal fight Charlo. I mean, fight Charlo. Nah, I'm, I'm tripping. Fight Canelo because at this point, <clears throat> Caleb Plant slapped Jamal Charlo in his face. And he's trying to get that fight. Now I've seen Jamal Charles been working out with Ronnie Shields and Roy, and, uh, Roy Jones and, you know, but it's like, he didn't do shit when he got slapped. He actually walked to his right and after people started backing Caleb Plant up, that's when he starts walking towards Caleb and it was just like, wow. So, <clears throat> again, man, I'm not with the out, outside the ring to antics and all of that. Now, don't get me wrong. He earned that slap. Grabbed the man's face, pulled on his beard. So you was bluffing because Caleb slapped the shit out of you. You understand what I'm saying? Where was that Lions only? Where was, where was that mentality? Remember that time somebody fought <laughs> and the Charlo was just walking back. And I think it was Jared, was it, what's his name? Um, Heard, the guy, uh, Jared Heard, whatever his name is. Last name Heard. And he was standing there, and remember how Jamal was standing down, looking at him all crazy, like he was ready to fight him then and there? It makes you wonder, if Heard would have swung at him, what he did? Like, would he have done anything? Remember they were spazzing out on um, Adrian Broner and Tank Davis one day? Y'all little bitches, nigga, I'm talking to you, bitch ass nigga. Remember, remember that? So I'm like, maybe that's what it comes down to. All the barking, but you don't expect nothing to really happen. Or maybe that's how they were at the time. And maybe through life kicking their ass or whatever. I don't know. Maybe they're just not the same anymore. I mean, John Ryder got fucked up. But at least John Ryder was trying, man. Errol Spence got fucked up by Crawford, but at least Earl was trying. Jamel did nothing, man. He 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 did he did he did nothing in that ring, man. He didn't even look like a champion. He honestly, this didn't look like two undisputed guys. This just looked like a guy who was up and coming, like like a Marvis Frazier. Shouldn't have been there with Larry Holmes or Tyson, but that's how he looked, man. Like 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 I'm I'm watching this, like yo, what the fuck happened to Jamel Charlo? Where's the fucking Jamel that I'm used to seeing? Like where? I ain't talking about the, the conference bullshit. I'm talking about in the fucking ring. Where was that, Jamel? Where was that Lions-only motherfucker at? 
Who is that bad motherfucker at? He didn't show up. He didn't show up this past Saturday. So he didn't give Canelo nothing to worry about. Canelo just said, all right, no problem. And you can see Canelo's, look, from, from look, Canelo's plan was the same shit. I walk you down, keep walking, keep coming in, try to get you across the, the ropes, bang to your body, punch a motherfucker in the arms, that old school shit, beat his arms up, his body up, everything. You understand what I mean? Try to trap you on them ropes. And and like, I mean, this dude is six foot something, man. I, I Now, I expected Jamel to pump his jab out more. I expected him to control the distance with his jab and his lateral movement. And basically, you know, hit Canelo from the angles, keep Canelo trying to come in, not letting him get his feet set, and catching him, beating him to the punch. You watch Bevo fight him, right? Well, did you see him? See, Bevo fought basic but discipline and stuck to his game plan. I failed to see what Jamel Charlo's game plan was other than to just try to survive 12 rounds. Because he definitely wasn't trying to win that fight. And he had to know he was losing every round. I didn't give him one round. Every fucking round, I felt like he lost. So, what was Jamel Charlo's plan? What 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 was his... And and, and look, <coughs> for him to say, I still think I'm the best fight. Like, come on, bro. It, I mean, there's delusional and then there's crackhead delusional. And I've been rocking with... Jamel and Jamal Charlo from day one, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't, like, I can't say what I don't feel, and I feel like he gave up, he, he, he stopped trying, he never really started trying, he just threw a few punches here and there, uh, you know, and, and what's funny is, we talk about punch stats, hey, man, he, he was barely throwing anything, both of them like the first two, three rounds, wasn't really throwing much anything. And that's why I said, <clears throat> I'm going to see like going into the fourth round if Jamel is going to try to pick up the pace and like try to take over this fight, but nothing. And when Canelo realized, okay, Jamel, and look, Canelo expected more from him. Because Canelo, you could see Canelo was trying to like, Canelo was, was, was trying to be cautious too. And he realized, you know what? This motherfucker scared. He's scared of me. He don't want to fight. He don't want to commit to anything. He's trying so hard to not get hit. And Canelo just started, you know, kept coming, kept coming. And he basically, <coughs> you know, won the fight. So people saying Canelo's back. Canelo is as good as he ever was. Canelo's just saying, okay, fine. Uh, you know, great, whatever. But I saw the same Canelo. I, I saw the same Canelo that we've been seeing. Jamel Charlo gave him nothing to worry about. He didn't put up a fight. He didn't. He he didn't. He did much of nothing. And <clears throat> it's in, and the thing is, punch placement, timing, all that. Charlo just barely did anything, but land a few punches that basically showed no effect on Canelo, and that might have also fucked with his confidence. <clears throat> you know, now he seemed to be taking the loss well. But <clears throat> excuse me, and I think maybe maybe the payday that 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 he gained from this might have made him take the loss better. But he just showed up and didn't and, and didn't want to fight. I can't say it no other way, y'all. I can't sit here. I'm you know y'all know me. <clears throat> I don't pretend or say what I don't mean. If I was sitting next to Jamel Charlo right now, I'd tell him, man. If you don't want to rematch the guy that beat you, right? You wanted to rematch Tony Harrison real bad. You cried after that fight because you thought you won the fight. And then basically, you wanted Tony Harrison. You wanted this fight. I mean, where was that same hunger against Canelo? How the fuck you going to get your ass whooped like you did? <clears throat> and, and the thing about it, it wasn't like he went in and got punished. He just got outpointed. It wasn't no action-packed fight. Canelo just won. So when people making it seem like yo Canelo dominated Canelo, yeah he he, he won a boring ass fight because Can that Canelo's trying to hit fight, <clears throat> and Jamel's just trying to survive. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean here's a guy came up two weight classes, but showed nothing. So I I I don't see this as no Canelo's back better than ever. I just see the same old Canelo. That had an opponent that didn't want to do, fucking engage. 
And, you know, yeah, like I said, I would tell him, man, you, you, for you to walk away from that, I make you look soft, man. I make you like a real bitch. Because, and like I said, it's not about the shit talking, but the fact that the hunger, him wanting to fight Tony Harrison so bad in that rematch, wanted the rematch and other fights that he wanted. <clears throat> but he, he, and so now when you look at the press conference, it's like, yeah, he, he was so laid back and he wasn't trying to get, and I'm like, okay, the older you get, the maturity kicks in, certain things you don't do. You just outgrow certain shit. <clears throat> but the performance in the ring, <clears throat> I can understand a person saying, now look at how he was in the press conference versus the other past press conferences. And look at how he was in this one, but look at, and look at the result. So I get it completely. You know, but the bigger picture of all that is real simple. What does he do going forward? Because pretty much it doesn't matter if you beat <clears throat> other fighters that's not elite. You talk about legacy. You beat some good fighters, but I keep telling y'all, these fighters now are not the same. You got a handful of fighters you can sprinkle around, go to different divisions and say, okay, this guy is a good fighter, but I'm talking about pound for pound, all time great. It's not a lot of fighters that have that kind of quality. You, you did that, that. They're not that caliber of fighter. I don't care how flashy they might look. There's a handful of people who, you know, but overall, uh, boxing is not what it was. <clears throat> and so for you to have undisputed guys, you know, fighting each other, you expect a, a fucking back and forth, you know, a seesaw type matchup. None of that. None of it. Even if somebody goes to sleep, but the fight itself... I mean, this was a boring ass fight to me. Nothing was happening. The only thing that kept me interested was when was Jamel finally gonna start to fight back. But to be honest with you, by the sixth or seventh round, I was just feeling like really, really before that, really, really the fourth round, because the first, like I said, it was filling each other out and it wasn't much going on. But like. Like I said, I'm thinking, okay, let's let's just see if that's what he's, you know, from the fourth on. Because now we're talking if he can win these rounds and just start lighting up. And we talk about, you know, a guy coming in and winning the majority of the rounds, but impressively. So you got to step his game up. And in the fourth round, I was just like, nah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't expect anything. But you still, because you're watching the fight, and this is a guy who who who's walking around here, undisputed champion. You think he's gonna have it in him, and he showed you that he didn't have it. He just didn't. So, <clears throat> and see <clears throat> now for the Canelo fans that want to say, Nah, Jamel is is good. It's just that Canelo is elite. We know Canelo's elite, but Jamel Charlo gave him nothing to worry about. I mean, he, he he basically was doing nothing. Like, he was scared to get hit, man. He was scared to even... It, it, like, he was scared to really punch Canelo hard. And I told you guys, when guys' nerves get to them, their punches are not the same. We've seen that. This is why I told you, when you when you was watching Anthony Joshua fight Usyk, you could see the frustration on his face to, like, AJ, like, he wasn't sure about what he was supposed to be doing. He wasn't sure of himself. And that's why his shots wasn't... He, he had nothing on his shots, and, you know, he was, and he was just felt like a desperate fighter, you know? Like, I'm trying to be perfect. I have to be perfect to beat Usyk. That's that's how I feel like he was thinking, like, you know, he was fighting himself. But <clears throat> with Jamel Charlo, you know, like I said, when he decided to let his hands go, he was landing shots, clean shots. But the guy was scared, man. Now, as far as Crawford goes, If that would be a fight that he actually entertains, <clears throat> according to him, <clears throat> he no longer has a sights on, on, on Jamel. But let's say if he was to entertain that fight. He's going to basically be the A side and he's going to, even though they would be fighting. No, here's the crazy part. Even with Jamel having all those belts and it's at 154, so... Crawford has no belts at 154. He would still be the A-side. 
this wouldn't even be a fight that I feel like people would really care about. Honestly, after that performance, people would climb on more to Canelo versus Crawford. But really, and I truly, y'all, <clears throat> I would rather see Canelo fight against Benavides. You know, the war or, or Demetrius Andre, like fight the, the 168 guys. That's what I'd rather see him do. Truthfully, I'm not really, I don't really care about Crawford versus Canelo fight. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but like, <clears throat> I don't really care to see that fight, honestly. I know people will say, yeah, but <clears throat> Crawford skills, and I get you, but I'm, I really, I, see, my thing is this. Crawford was chasing these guys at 147 for the longest. <coughs> Benavidez <clears throat> has been chasing Canelo for the longest. Morel comes on the scene. There's different guys. You know, Caleb finally got his shot, brother. There's different guys. Demetrius Andre. Okay? That's been trying to get at Canelo way before Terrence Crawford came along. People talking about the legacy of the, the whole, you know, undisputed, like, Come on, man. Come on. My whole thing is I don't like people jumping the line just be, for popularity's sake. I, I don't. So I don't care about that. I don't think Crawford should get a shot over Benavidez. You know, or, or Andre if he wins. I don't. Even Morrell for that fact. But I feel like as far as Charlo goes, he can't fight against Canelo, <clears throat> then go fight some, some, you know, some meatball and expect people to really care. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's just one of these things where I, I like I'm saying, everybody come over this pound for pound list. Everybody want to talk all this greatest of all time stuff. I told y'all this before, and I mean this. <laughs> you can't go just dragging people's names into conversations as being all-time greats because they win some fights. It's who they went against, how they looked um, against these people, what they did, did they rise above expectations. Like, And, you know, just saying, these guys haven't done enough. The most I can say about guys like Charlo and them is that and their error for what they did. They stood out against those opponents. But in terms of all-time great, <clears throat> it's like when I said, for example, <clears throat> Jamel Charlo, he surpassed Terry Norris at 154 for being undisputed because Terry was never undisputed. Okay. And Jamel can crack. But I said, for him to beat Terry, you got to knock Terry out. He can't box with Terry. Terry will fuck Jamel Charles. I, I've been said this shit years ago. Terry was too good. But Terry had a habit of getting careless too. He would sometimes outbox motherfuckers so easily that he would just, just get careless and make mistakes and, you know, just get caught slipping. That's the only way I could see Jamel Charlo beating him. But like I said, skill for skill, he can't fuck with Terry. But he surpassed him in terms of accomplishments. Yeah. Yeah. And they both Texas, they both, both, both. Look, well, well, San Diego, California, Campo, California, whatever. But Terry from that. But anyway, bottom line, um, you know, <clears throat> my point is, for the era that the Charlos are in, for this this era period, these guys is not superstars. These guys are not super popular. And, you know, they're good. Um, even for fighters to make it in the Hall of Fame. Okay, cool. But, and like, Charlo would have to need, he, he he's going to need some real big wins against some really big names in order to, to get that respect that, that I'm pretty sure he wants to have as a fighter. But, you know, because you went in there with this guy. Look, let's look at it like this, right? <laughs> Kell Brook came up from 147. <clears throat> Jumped in there with Triple G. Was out boxing Triple G. He was taking it to him. We knew that the power was going to be a difference. And that he would have to stay away from that power. It's, it's like all night long. 
Triple G finally caught up to him and started breaking him down. You know, broke his orbital bone and, you know, got the stoppage. Did what he had to do. Now, Kell Brook tried. He fought back. He fought back. Jamel Charlo, on the other hand, who's a lot bigger than Kell Brook, I told you guys, Canelo Alvarez picked him because of the long layoff. So even for the layoff, <clears throat> according to Jamel, didn't bother him. He was good. Great. <clears throat> but he had confidence that, okay, I've been active and he hasn't. Look at the effect that Jamel Charlo punches have on guys at 154 versus what they had, what he had on the shots against Canelo. You don't have to be the hardest puncher. You rely on your skills. And this is where you see Jamel Charlo had no faith in his skills. He basically had no faith in anything. So, he's at a point where he's holding belts, but who do you really care to see him fight now? You know? And I've always rocked with the Charlos. But in all honesty, like I said, I at least credit Errol Spence for trying. He never stopped trying against Crawford. He's repetitive, but he never stopped trying. He kept coming all night long. He kept kept trying to win. We didn't see that same fight inside of Jamel Charlo. You know, we didn't see that. Now, I'm not going to get into what's next for Crawford because this video is not really about him. But me again, I don't even care to see Jamel versus uh, Crawford. Crawford is going to stay at 147. He should do the right thing and fight Dryans. If he's going to come up and wait, who is he going to fight? Because I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy to get him and Canelo in that ring. And he's going to have to take whatever Canelo gives him. All around. For that fight to happen. And, you know, for Jamel. Well. He just looks like an ordinary guy now. He really does. Now, <clears throat> did he look different? Did he look off? No, he just looked like he was scared. And that's what I believe. Like I said, I'll say it one more time. I believe he felt something from his arm to the body. He felt Canelo's power. He got scared. And he didn't want to commit to anything. He wanted to try to take as less pun punishment as possible, collect that big check. He, 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 didn't, he didn't earn his keep, man. He didn't go in and... He didn't leave it all in the ring. <laughs> he never took any risks. He never tried to do anything. He just tried to be safe all night. See? It's easy to say you, you could beat Floyd and you was better than Floyd and you was better than whoever. You just took a loss and, and, and basically didn't try to do anything and said you still think you're the best fighter in the world. Well, <clears throat> you can think what you want, but when you don't prove it in the ring, that's going to be the deciding factor. And after this performance, man, you know, well, <clears throat> his stock went down even though he's still champion at 154. His stock went down because of a lack of effort. So, <clears throat> you look around for different challenges and it's like, well, who does he fight? Who can he fight that people is going to even care about? And right now, you know, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. I feel like Jamal needs to get in there with Caleb. Seriously. Caleb wants to fight. Jamal needs to get in there. You grab that man beard, he slapped the dog shit out you. And you should want to get in there. Now, let's say that he was to actually beat Caleb Plant. And then here's why I don't think that fight's going to happen. Because even when Jamal Charlo was on the phone with, um, I don't know, the, the FaceTime or whatever he was doing, him and Demetrius Andre, he told him, but I never fought at 168, though. And at least he's up at, to 160, so you're talking about eight-pound difference where his brother jumped with two weight classes. <coughs> and and that's all he kept talking about, <clears throat> was that I never fought at what? I never fought at 168. And then his brother was like, I don't care. You know, I'm going up. I'm, I'm daring to be great and all. Yeah, it all sound good, right? Before the fight, didn't it? During the fight, you didn't see any of that. So, And, you know, if you don't want to fight the guy that beat you, 
that's because you, you're either one, you made up in your mind, I can't beat this guy. Or two, you're scared. Three, all of the above. You can't tell me that, you know, and this is what I'm saying. So anybody who, oh man, why are you hating on Charlo? Go jump off a building. Like I said, I've been riding with them from since day one. But I, I, I call it like I see it. And I don't pull no punches. And I'm not going to say and pretend. That man felt like he was scared. Talk to me in the comment section, y'all. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people. And I will catch y'all on the next video.